All right, there are a number of natural hybrids out there in the southeastern United States, but there's only one of them that is named, and that's Sonderegger pine. Uh, the other common name it has is bastard pine. Uh, Dr. Chapman, who's one of the earliest foresters that was working at the faculty at Yale, did a lot of research on longleaf pine in Louisiana, and uh, he named this after the state forester of Louisiana, Sonregger, and the story is he named it because Sonregger was the biggest bastard he knew. Um, however, beside that point, uh, we don't know if that's true or not. Uh, we have an outplanting of this natural hybrid at the ag farm, and it was intentionally put out there uh, just so we can have a demonstration of this, uh, this hybrid. It does take characteristics of both species, the loblolly pine and longleaf pine, and, it's, and it's, it can be fairly prevalent in areas that both species are found. They both uh, flower at the same time, so it's very easy to get that cross-pollination. If you look at the two examples I have here right behind me, you can see some of the uh, characteristics of both species uh, showing, showing here. This is a three-year-old seedling, and you can see the longer needles associated with uh, longleaf pine, and even the needles on the stem, again like longleaf pine, relatively thick diameter longleaf pine, but then this extended uh, terminal buds on the branches more like a loblolly pine and you can even see the candelabra branching pattern that's associated with longleaf pine. However, no grass stage. So in a nursery, when a, nur a commercial nursery is producing what well, they want long, uh, longleaf pine, uh, it, they're easy to spot because they're going to start coming out of that in the seedling stage and start having this kind of terminal bud associated with them. It doesn't self-prune very well, as you can see on the lower branches. Again, that's more like a loblolly pine characteristic. Um, usually doesn't grow really well. Now, this site wasn't well site prepped. It was a pasture, a lot of compaction there, a lot of clay on the soil. We stuck them in the ground anyway, and then we had some mortality between these uh, trees and these rows, uh, partly because of the soil and partly because they uh, ran it over with... Uh, a bush hog when they're uh, cutting some on that. But you can see these in various places. The terminal, the one right behind me, got hammered by one of the thunderstorms we've had in the last couple weeks. Depending on whether Dr. Stovall and I are able to get out to the one site where we do have some natural hybrids uh, found on the site uh, that we usually take the students on one of the days of our week of field station, we can show you a more mature uh, example of these things. What's really interesting is that because it's a hybrid, it can take a uh, form like this, or it can be a little bit more like a loblolly, or a little bit more like a longleaf pine, because it is kind of filling in that gap between these two distinguished, uh, uh, distinguishable species. Uh, one tree that we went to one year, the terminal buds looked ju just like loblolly, and so we were kind of discussing, well, this is not a hybrid, this is not Sondrager, it's a loblolly. Next year we went to the same uh, tree and pulled down the branches and the terminal buds looked a lot more like uh, longly. So this is a natural hybrid that is named. Uh, there's also a natural hybrid between loblolly and shortleaf pine, which doesn't have a really nice name. Some of us just call it slob. Uh, on that one, and we'll probably get a chance to look at those sometime when we get when we come across that and film it. Dr. Oswald mentioned getting to see a mature stand. Uh, while we didn't get time to go out and film it, I do have some photos of it for you. So this is from the 2011 field station. Uh, that's Dr. Dean Coble in the lead there with the metal hard hat. This was my very first field station. I believe this was even the very first day of my first field station. Uh, this stand is about six miles north of Broadus, Texas, off 147. It's in an area of the Angelina National Forest called the Turkey Hill Wilderness Area. Uh, you can see power lines at the top are actually out on a power line right of way. And as you look around this area, uh, you'll notice trees, big, mature, you know, I think they're up to about 70 feet tall trees, and some of them look a lot like longleaf, some of them look a little bit more like loblolly. Uh, this is an area that Dr. Victor Ballon identified. He was an SFA professor focused on ecophysiology 
Um, and when he retired, uh, Dr. Hans Williams took over for him. Uh, so he's the one that planted the nutmeg hickory out in front of our forestry building. Uh, so he identified this area, and it looks like an area where you're not far from a creek where you might have naturally had the loblollies occurring. Uh, but as we move up the hill, the soil texture here is fairly sandy. So it's an area where longleaf would have been more of the dominant species. And so it's believed to be an area where these two species would have naturally integrated. And that's why you have some abundance of hybrids. Uh, so I've been out there uh, with Dr. Kobo. I've been out there some years at Field Station with Dr. Oswald. And we always get in debates as to which trees are hybridized and which trees aren't. Because if you look at them, some of them have great longleaf buds on them. And then you'll look at, you know, the tree right next to it. And sure enough, it's got that brown stripes characteristic of loblolly, but the bud's way too large to be loblolly. Um, the form on the large trees tends to lean a little bit more towards longleaf, but, you know, they're not quite true to form. So this is an example of what a natural stand of Sonderacre pine looks like when it's mature. Um, you can clearly see from how these younger cohorts are behaving in response to suppression from the older cohort that the hybrid does appear to be very shade intolerant, which is no surprise. Uh, we have longleaf pine that is very intolerant of shade, and we have lavalli pine that is intolerant of shade, so it makes sense their hybrid would also be either intolerant or very intolerant of shade. It appears to be very intolerant. So now you've toured a mature Sonderager pine stand.